Uh, all right, here's a story that in some ways for me was deja vu all over again that has been kicking around this week. Consumer New Zealand's come out and said a lot of add-on insurance policies, particularly for automo- uh, autom- automotive vehicles, cars, are a bit of a rip-off um, and you should be wary about them. And the reason it feels like deja vu, I can remember covering stories uh, about things like automotive breakdown insurance on car sales and stuff. When I worked at Fairgo in the mid-1990s, like 30 years ago, and it seems to me nothing has really changed by law to stop these sort of rip-off policies being sold to an unwearing, to unwary consumers. So I think it's a story that's worth highlighting, and we are joined now by the people who have blown the whistle on this or raised this concern, the Chief Executive of Consumer New Zealand, uh, John Duffy. John, welcome to the platform. Nice to have you with us. Thanks, Sean. Good to be here. All right. What sort of insurance or extra cover are we talking about here? So we're talking about the the types of add-on insurance that the dealer will talk you into as you purchase the vehicle, and, and particularly when you're putting the vehicle on finance. So mechanical breakdown insurance, um, what's called guaranteed asset protection insurance. So that's a few, uh, a bit like income protection insurance. If you lose your job and, and can't meet the repayments for the finance, it's a it's an insurance that, that, well, is supposed to kick in there and we'll get into what the problems are with that type of product. Um, there's credit contract indemnity insurance, which is pretty much a similar thing, and payment protection insurance, which again covers you if you can't um, make your payments. Right. Uh, and these are all offered so conveniently at point of sale by the person who's flogging you the car, right? By the person who's flogging you the car and by also by typically by a person who earns a commission, the more of these products that you add on to the overall deal. All right. What is wrong with these products? What is it? Why do you consider them to be a rip-off? Well, in some circumstances, they're okay. And really, those circumstances are where a consumer's been fully informed about what the cover is and what the additional benefits that they'll earn or that they'll, they'll accrue from that cover. So let's take mechanical breakdown insurance. You mentioned it in your intro. Yeah, this has been a, around for years and is, is effectively a type of extended warranty. But, you know, in New Zealand, we're lucky enough to have a piece of legislation called the Consumer, Consumer Guarantee. Guarantees Act. Yep. Which, which says if... A product that you purchase from a trader goes wrong within a reasonable period of time. Yep. You uh, that trader has an obligation to fix it. So if you're buying mechanical breakdown insurance to protect you against something that the Consumer Guarantees Act protects you for already, well, you it's just, a redundancy. You don't need it. You're waning your money. Yeah, That's but right, this doesn't just happen with cars. I mean, every time I go to Harvey Norman's or Noel Leeming's, oh, do you want extra insurance for that? Or you know, break, and I go always look and said, no. Why should I pay more? than the list price when the Consumer Guarantees Act says if this thing breaks or doesn't do what I want it to, I've already got legal coverage and they always look slightly insulted, John. Well, they do, and they're probably a little bit put out because every time, as I understand it, every time they can they can push an extended warranty, um, they get they, they line their pockets a little bit. And this is you know where the big box retailers really make a bit more margin um, because competition's, you know, good in that sector and, 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 and margins have been driven down a little bit, which is great for consumers, uh, but the, the retailers are looking to recoup some of that margin through through these add-on products that are, in many cases, pretty much useless. So extra insurance that doesn't do you any good isn't the preserve of the automotive sales in- industry? No, I mean, if you think of if you think of mechanical breakdown insurance as a type of exter- um, um, extended warranty, then this is happening across the across the the retail sector. The the interesting thing that's probably moved on from the time you were in Fair Go is that there's been a requirement introduced under the Fair Trading Act for extended warranties, uh, requiring disclosure at the point of sale um, of all the terms that that are that are um, contained within the um, extended warranty and why that's beneficial to the consumer. The problem with that, I mean, that's all well and good. Yeah. Disclosure is great. Informed consumers make good decisions in theory, but it does rely on you being informed about what the Consumer Guarantee yeah. Act actually entitles you to so that you can make a realistic comparison. Yeah. And, and a lot of people, 
you know, they're in, they're in a hurry. They're, I don't know, they're purchasing a fridge. It might be several several thousand yeah. dollars worth of yeah. appliance they're buying, and they're going, geez, it actually probably sounds pretty good if we get this thing because we'll be protected, not necessarily knowing that, that actually, you know, hard well, to Why don't we just more. have a law, John, that makes it illegal to offer add-on insurance that protects you against loss that is already covered by legislation like the Consumer Guarantees Act. You say it's illegal to offer someone a product they don't need. Well, it's illegal to misrepresent the need for a product. So the Fair Tracking Act covers right. that already. Right, okay, so, yep. And, and, and some of the examples that we've, we've uh, seen, and the Commerce Commission's looked into this late last year as well, and some of the examples they've seen, actually dealers are really, they're really not uh, fully disclosing why a consumer needs this. They're just saying, hey, this is a good thing, you should get this, and people aren't questioning it and purchasing it. So that's one issue. If you're actively misled, uh, either either overtly or by omission, uh, it couldn't be a breach of the Fair Trading Act. But secondly, there are circumstances where um, some aspects of these insurances are good. And there might be some people out there who go, okay, I know that I've got uh, rights under the Consumer Guarantees Act, but to enforce those rights, well, worst case scenario, I'm going to have to head to the disputes tribunal. It's going to cost me forty dollars. It's a yeah. pain in the bum. I actually want the convenience of a of a warranty or an extended yeah. warranty that that means the retailer will just jump to it when I ask. Yeah, uh, a car's quite a big purchase too. I think the second biggest purchase that we make in our lives. Um, Generally, yeah. yeah. So, so it's important that, that. Yeah, John, give us some right. rules of thumb in the real world when confronted with these issues as how consumers can best make good decisions and protect themselves? Well, first, firstly, the, the key thing is don't get swept up in the moment because, you know, there's the old cliche about car dealers uh, and their silver tongues, but, but actually you're in, you are in the moment, you're making a big decision to purchase a significant asset. Yeah. You don't have to go along with everything that's put in front of you. Just so, so remember, remember that as a consumer. Yeah. Um, secondly, you can take some time. If you, if you think, oh, that might be a good thing, you don't have to purchase it there and then. You can take some time to go away, read through things, perhaps take some advice. You can jump onto, this is a bit of a shameless plug, but jump onto consumer.org.nz and there's advice around insurance products there for you. Um, have a think about what you're being offered and look, look at those other sources of advice, impartial advice, and, yeah. and weigh up the pros and cons. And the other thing, I guess, too, is getting the person you're buying a vehicle off to to provide the finance, I would just say, as a rule of thumb, not the greatest thing to do um, because it means well, in some ways you're hooked up even further financially with the people you're buying the product off. Yeah, and this is... I mean, this, this, it's a separate issue, but there does seem to me there's a tension there, there's a conflict, mm. um, and, and many... Many car dealerships will have a finance arm attached to them, and they have been the target of you know multiple investigations by consumer organisations. One, one of your uh, potential colleagues on um, on Fair Go, probably after your time, but it was, it certainly had an experience with a with a car dealership um, in the North Island uh, on on this very issue around vehicle financing. Yeah, and um, you know it's it is in some ways the less um what's the best way to put it it's the the seedy underbelly of the car industry in many ways um so you you can look elsewhere for finance you shouldn't mm. feel that you you need to take finance through the dealership you're you're buying through yeah yeah look john i'm really glad consumer raised this i'm amazed that it's still an issue and maybe it always will be uh i commend people to uh read up on this coverage and think about these things uh, before they go and buy their next uh, vehicle and also commend you and Consumer for the excellent work you've done, uh, that organisation has done for so long, uh, helping to protect New Zealand against questionable uh, commercial practices uh, on consumers. And I thank you very much for your time this morning. No problem. Thanks, Sean. Cheers. John Duffy, CEO of Consumer New Zealand. Oh, yeah, and I do. I get, actually, I get peeved off. When they say, oh, do you want a special insurance cover for buying, I don't know, that $100 set of headphones or whatever? No, I don't. You're selling me it, it works. If it doesn't work, I bring it back and you give me a refund. End of story. The law guarantees that to me. I don't have to give you my home address, my phone number, my email, 
and any more bloody money for you to sell me something that does what I you say it does for the price that you put on the sticker. So I would say be very, very wary of the added extra. A simple deal is a good deal, in my opinion.